Hi my lovelies, I hope you're all well. So today we're going to carry on with our print and cut mini series. Today we're going to look at printable iron on light and we're actually going to use an SVG for our printable. So the first thing I want to do is go to upload. We're going to upload image. We're going to browse until we find the file we want. So you can see it's an SVG and it comes straight in. We cannot remove anything. We cannot do anything except for change the image name and add some tags. So we're going to go to save. Once it's uploaded, we can then click on it and insert images. So you can see it's come into design space. Now it's slightly off. Well, it's not slightly off. It's majorly off. But that's okay. I'm not too worried about it at this point. So the first thing I want to do is ungroup it. Now this back piece I want to keep as is. But for the time being, I'm just going to hide it. Now for the rest of it, I'm happy with it. I just want to change the colors slightly. So the first thing I'm going to do is you can see that each individual word is grouped. So I'm going to hide the ones I don't want. So I want to keep the lighter green ones at the minute. So I'm just going to go through and hide all the others. So you can see I'm left with these ones. Now, if I highlight them all, if I weld them, I will not be able to flatten them. So all I'm going to do is attach them together. And this will then have them in one kind of grouping. So it'll clean up my layers panel slightly. And the other great thing is if I just click on one individually and I change the color slightly, it will change all of them. So it just makes life a little bit easier. If we then hide those ones, let's go and get the gold pieces up. Again, we can do exactly the same thing. We're going to highlight all and attach. And then we're just going to change the color slightly. And we can continue to do that for all of our colors that we want to change. Once you are happy with it, we can then bring back our back layer. And of course, we are going to flatten our text onto our back layer. So what that means is it will print everything out as you see it, but it will only cut out the outline of our tree. It will not cut out all our text individually, which is the way we want it. So we're just going to come in and place them all. Once we're happy, we're going to highlight everything and we can then flatten. As always, there is a size limit with print and cut. So you do want to make sure that you are within those limits. We can then go to make it. Now I am using printable iron on light today. With printable iron on light, the general rule of thumb is that you are going to mirror it. But as always, I recommend reading the instructions. As always, I am going to send to my inkjet printer. I like to have my bleed off, but you can have yours on. It's completely up to you. If you do have your bleed on, please do note that when you print it, there will be a slight bleed around the image. This is absolutely fine. It just acts as a buffer for the machine when cutting. So this is MDP Supplies Color Active Printable Iron On Light. There is a white side and a gridded side. You want to make sure that you place it in your printer so that it prints on the white side. Once it's printed, as always with inkjet, I give it a good 10 minutes so that it can dry. In terms of my cut setting I'm going to use, if you are using an Air or an Air 2, you just need to move your dial to custom. Obviously, if you're using a maker like I am, then you'll automatically come to your screen. You can see I'm having a few internet problems at the minute. I will get it sorted shortly. But I'm going to use the printable iron on light setting. I'm using printable iron on light from MDP Supplies today. And I find this setting works perfectly with it. But as always, if you are using a new material, please do do a tester cut. 
Once it's dry, we're going to place it on a green mat and go in with our fabric brayer or a non-stick roller. As always, you can use a scraper, but I advise being careful around your ink areas. The other option is to, as I've said before, put some felt over your scraper and it will just protect your ink. Once it's cut out, we're going to remove it from our mat and then you're going to come in at a corner and you're just going to very gently start weeding away. So as I said, we are going to put this on a canvas today. So I've got my canvas here. I've got a little homemade pressing pillow. This one I haven't covered, so it's just upholstery foam. But it's going to work the same nevertheless. And it will just make sure that when we place our easy press on there, our canvas is not going to dip. We're going to place our printable iron on light face down onto our canvas. It doesn't have to be a canvas if you're using an item of clothing. If it's iron on light, it's going to go on face down. I then like to place either a Teflon or a silicone sheet over just to protect the area. And MDP supplies suggest going in at 175 degrees Celsius for 15 seconds if you are using a heat press. So I'm going to do the same with the easy press. As always, it's worth having an experiment. It's worth reading the instructions as well. So I'm just going to go in with my easy press and just place it on there and hold it in place. Now this is a hot peel, but I always like to give it a good 30 seconds just to cool down slightly. Just a tip that I've learned, especially with kind of porous materials such as canvas, if you're using printable iron-on, especially the light, if you get the back end of your scraper and you just rub it on, what it will do is if you've got any pieces that haven't kind of sat into uh, the kind of porous bits of the canvas, it will just allow them to kind of take hold. So it's worth just, while you're waiting for it to cool down slightly, just going in and doing that. As I say, give it about 30 seconds and then we're going to come in and we're just going to gently start peeling away. Now that is nice and on there. I don't personally go in with another press. I don't see the need to, uh, but if you want to, you could. I would reduce the heat and the time slightly though. I just don't see the necessity to do so. You will see some of the porous bits coming through. I personally think that adds to it. I quite like that, but of course it's a personal thing. If you don't like that, then this isn't the project for yourself.